Previously on Kitchen Circus. I actually had to make my own seafood stock. So that seafood stock, I made it myself. In the five, within the five hour parameter. 25 minutes to show plate, okay? Yes. Right. You're feeling good about this? Yes. I want to hear a yes. 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 Okay. The competition was neck and neck. But Marissa won by the slightest of margins with her dessert, a baklava-inspired panna cotta. This was my favorite course of the night, hands down, and I'm not usually even a dessert person. Marissa! She will join Beth in the Kitchen Circus finale at the end of the season. Now you're going to be in the oh grand finale gosh. dinner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kitchen Circus. Right. I look forward to working with you. Nine home cooks with no professional kitchen experience are thrown into the big time competing on Kitchen Circus. Joining the judges in the dining room are celebrity guests, Jason Wilson, Chef at Crush, and James Beard Award winner. Yeah, I'm definitely excited. I mean, the, the selections look fantastic. NPR radio host Steve Scherer. Well, that just sounds great. And Maria Hines. Jeff at Tilt and James Beard Award winner. Definitely more of that clean flavor kind of a kind of a gal. And our host, Chef Terry Rotaro. We auditioned home cooks to take on the challenge of cooking in Rover's professional kitchen, and after two rounds of cuts, nine home cooks were selected to compete on Kitchen Circus. Three will compete today, each making an amuse bouche and one course of a three course meal, either the appetizer, the entree, or the dessert. Let's meet the contestant. First up, Erena Malarkey. Hi, my name is Erena Malarkey, and I am really excited to be here. I think the next week and the last few months have been really fun and definitely kind of a wild ride, so I'm excited to see where it ends. Next, Peter Houston. Hi, I'm Peter Houston, and I'm thrilled to be part of Kitchen Circus. It makes me think about when I moved to Seattle 16 years ago and started going to some of the really great restaurants. And I'll never forget the first dinner I had in Seattle uh, was seared scallops, and it was like, oh my God, there's, this is a whole nother level of cooking. And since then, I've tried to uh, learn to make as many of these dishes as I can. And finally, Christine Wilson. Hi, I'm Christine Wilson, and uh, one of the things I like about cooking is oftentimes I never make the same thing twice, because I like the idea of creating something, kind of like a piece of art or something. You get to create something different every single time. So when friends come over, it's not like, oh, we're getting Christine's favorite blah, blah, blah. It's like, who knows what we're going to get tonight. All right, guys, Rob and I have deliberated and we have come up with a decision. Is there something you don't want to do? You want to tell me now before we start this? I will not admit anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The appetizer will go to Christine. You're going to be doing the appetizer. Okay. How's Great. that? That sounds you excited? Wonderful. I am. Oh, she just said she didn't <laughs> want the appetizer. Interesting. The entree will go to Peter. Excellent. That's great. You good with that? Very excited, yeah. Was it something you were going to tell me you don't want to do? Absolutely not. <laughs> I, the desserts <laughs> worried me uh, out of my mind, so the entree is just, just great. And the dessert will obviously go to Arena. Okay. You will be doing the dessert. On it. So make sure you train, train, train. You've got one week, and then we'll see you back in Kitchen Circus next Tuesday. Have a great week. You know, normally you're not cooking for 45 people. Even an average restaurant isn't cooking for 45 people at the same time. So that's the challenge. The little secret here is I really wanted the appetizer because when I made it last time, my friends just raved over it. And it's something I know I can make. But I prepared an entree recipe that I knew I would love to make also. So I have the dreaded dessert course. <laughs> So I, I don't really actually typically like dessert or make dessert that often. I'd much rather have another glass of wine. So I'm going to take this as a great learning opportunity to expand my uh, culinary and cooking repertoire into becoming a master of desserts. All right, guys, welcome to Kitchen Circus. Are you guys excited? Very, Very excited, excited definitely. definitely. Yeah. You've had one week to get ready, and I sure hope you used it wisely. We're here to help you make your recipe the best it can be, but it's still up to the diners to choose their favorite. 
Let me introduce you now to your sous chef. Christine, I choose Katie. She will be your sous chef awesome. for the day, you and you. you will be in good hands. Great. Peter, nice you. you will be preparing the entree, and you will be working Great. with Tyler. Great to meet you, Tyler. will be your sous chef. Looking forward to working with you today. Arena, you will be preparing the dessert course, and for that, we we'll give you Corinna Johnson, our own pastry chef. Lovely. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice Thank to meet you. you. Ready to win? Oh, yeah. I ordered all the ingredients for all of you. You have five hours from now until you present one plate of your amuse-bouche, your entree, your appetizer, or your dessert. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. 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 Are you yes. nervous? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's not, but you are. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. All right, we've assigned some station to you in the kitchen. Go. All right. How do you want to do it? Do you want to pick, do we want to split the tasks where we're both working on the same thing or should we split them up? Uh, well, let's do the mise en place entirely first, okay. right? So it's just tuna, tuna, tuna at this point. At any point, please help me out with this. <laughs> so let's do this. Why don't you dice shallots and I'll work, start working on the tuna. Okay. All right, I was kind of a lot more lobster, so that breaks down, it saves time. You have a lot of lobster, 14 lobster. For 50 people, is a lot of lobster. Clearly, I love lobster. I was hoping even for more. <laughs> it's an appetizer. I forget. know, exactly. If That's you it. fill them up with the lobster, they're going to go, mmm. Yeah, they're going to go, mmm. No, they're going to go, mmm, that's too much. Okay. It'll be proper serving, for sure. Yep. I think, you, I think you'll be fine. Okay. And then I was thinking we would do the cheesecakes first so that they have the longest period of time to chill. We're a few days out from Thanksgiving for when my dinner is, so I'm doing something that's based around a uh, pumpkin flavor. Two of those lobsters over there are ours. Shrimp and waist. Okay. All good, all good. This is fun, by the way. It's wonderful to work with such great ingredients. I've practiced this exact move hundreds of times. Well, maybe once. You think he was... Look at that guy. All the rest are dead and this guy just going nuts on me. If Kristen doesn't keep it together, that might go wrong. She has a very uh, touchy uh, dish, which is a lobster. Everybody wants to use lobster, caviar, truffle, and all those ingredients. Those are great, but if you don't do them right, it's an expensive mistake. And which okay, oven do we have to work with? We have this one. This one actually has air circulation. Trini, this my oven at home have... totally doesn't even work at all, so... <laughs> okay, this is cool. so exciting. Well, this is going to be a little bit hotter than what you're used okay. to working with. So when we started today, we went to turn on the ovens, and uh, two of the ovens were not working. Um, there was a clog in the pilot light, so we couldn't get them to work. It is true that we just had our oven check um, yesterday turned off. We were cleaning the hood and all that stuff, and, and the uh, people who turned them off never turned them back on, so we had to bring somebody in. Oops. <laughs> We can't be out of two ovens. <laughs> they were here instantly and fix it. So I, I try not to panic ever. You know, just get it done. I was laughing with the contestants because usually when this happens, it happens right in the middle of service, not during prep time. So they were pretty fortunate that uh, it, it wasn't during crunch time today. I don't even know what you're making over there. What are you making for dinner? Oh, this isn't just the amuse bush. Oh, that's for the amuse bush. Yeah. Got it. My goal is to get that completely done and out of the way before I do anything with, dinner, with the meal. It's going to be spicy. Okay. Now, how do you taste this? With a spoon again? You dying? Coming out of the My palate is now ruined. Really? <laughs> Are you willing to taste? Yep. concerned about Peter because he's taking his time on the Amuse to make it look perfect, which is nice, but he doesn't really have any of his main course items cooking yet, so it's, he's going to be hard pressed uh, to get that done and he'll have about two hours left. This is a fun challenge because uh, I'm definitely not a dessert chef. I prefer to drink my dessert. 
uh, in the form of another bottle of wine. So this is a good uh, excuse to try and get a little better at it. How are you looking on your last two? Well, so um, we're just, we're figuring out uh, portions right now, so. What are you gonna do with the claws? We didn't have plans for the claws. It was gonna be three. Katie, you know how to break claws? Oh yeah. Yeah. So where would you put the claw in the whole of it? How many lobster tails do you have? Twelve. Twelve? She took two. Yeah, twelve. So twelve, if you do three, that's only thirty-six. You need forty-six. I told him I needed more lobster. So you need four. Four times twelve is forty-eight. Perfect. So four people per lobster. Can you get four out of a tail? Yes. I'm gonna show you how. Okay. Excuse me. What you do is instead of cutting it straight down, you cut it in bias. And you can make eight medallion per tail. And then what you do when you do portioning, you can turn this upside down, put it underneath, and then you put a big one and a small one together. Just like this. Okay. You have plenty of lobster to do for you people. This is an appetizer. Right. You're not doing a main course here. Right. So if I'm So let's get the claws. And the claws we cut them in half. You'll have so much lobster, your people okay. are gonna wonder why you're giving them so much food. Okay. Trust right. me on this. Okay. We, 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 we're here for you. I got a limited amount of lobster. I felt like I was gonna get more than that. And so I did have to adapt. So, uh, how are you looking? You're feeling good? I am feeling amazing. I am so excited to have you come out this way. Beautiful sear. I love your ovens. I love your stoves. I love all of you. <laughs> no, it's a real thrill to be able to cook with this much heat. How's your, your meat and your, 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 your mushrooms? Everything is cool. You're, We're in great shape. You're going to be on time. We're in great shape. Your sauce is good. It's ready to sing down. I haven't started the sauce yet. You haven't started the sauce? No. Look, that's next. Don't okay. Work. Uh, work. There's pumpkins. I need a seeds. I want to toast those real quick. I think that's good. So try this. It's extremely overlooked though. I know. Yeah, you just burned it. That's what I just said. I said, oh, do you think start again? Um, are, what are you calling this? A maple curry whipped cream. They're going to say it's overlooked. Do you start again? Yeah. Okay. I messed up the whipped cream, so take two. I put a little bit in already, but then I was going to taste it. Um, so do you remember how much you put in last time? Like how many of those you put in? No, because I was just like going along. It was at least five. You're a wreck. Okay guys, we have one hour left, okay? One hour left. How are you guys looking? Why is your whipped cream yellow? Uh, I made a curry maple whipped That's cream. That's what you were making earlier. Yes. Irena's on time. Christine's on time. All right, it's 5.30, you guys made it. All on time, but Peter, you were a little bit behind. Let's not start this for the night, lady. When it's time to send your course, make sure you're on time, huh? Peter. Yes, sir. What's your amuse? My amuse bouche is uh, tuna tartare. Yeah. Uh, it's two layers. The bottom layer is tartare with uh, diced shallots and capers, a little bit of chili oil. On top of them, that is just tartare. And on the very top is pomelo uh, buds. Pomelo buds? Yes, and on top of that is a thin slice of lemon and on the sides we have a little bit of chive oil. Mm, I definitely feel the oil in the middle, that little pop of like heat, it's delicious. Did you put salt on this? Just a little. Oh, I would put a little bit more. This, more salt. It's really uh, lacking on salt. Got it. What's your amuse bouche? My amuse bouche is a seared scallop with um, in a chili um, coconut lime soup with a mango which is not on there anymore. No, it's and, right here. Oh, okay. And uh, cilantro. So remember, it fell off, so you might want to make, sure, stay you, on. make yep. sure you stay on. Yep. 
And there's a little bite of the wood that comes up. Smooth, but then a little, little bit of heat. Not much. It's, it's really, really good. Thank you, Chef. Marina? So for my amuse-bouche, I have a filo nest with lobster morsels tossed in a lemon beurre blanc with a finely diced chive and finished with a fried caper. Nicely cooked. Thank you. The texture of the filo with it, because it brings a little crunchiness to the mm -hmm. lobster. Yep, the, the flavor of lobster. Your beurre blanc is delicious. Very well made. Thank you very much. That is good. First course. Who made the first course? Your appetizer is? That's lobster medallions with a chipotle beurre blanc sauce, roasted chanterelle mushrooms. Uh, underneath is a bed of microgreens with pepitas sprinkled. And what's in the beurre blanc? Beurre it's blanc, pink. Chipotle. Chipotle. That's chipotle. what makes it pink? That's what makes it pink and spicy and smoky. Okay. Because your flavors are very separated, mm -hmm. but there is nothing that's really binding them. Did you just put salad on the plate? Uh, I have not done the olive oil on the salad because I didn't want it the big bowl to wilt, so it will be dressed better. My biggest advice, make a plate for yourself before you send everything and taste everything. If you're not going to make a plate, at least try everything. Make sure you season everything correctly. So what did you make for entree? For my entree, uh, lamb loin seared with a sauce of veal demi-glace, uh, Riesling, and a little bit of tarragon. There's the farro. Uh, with a roasted shimeji mushrooms, baby carrots with a royal oyster mushroom. Lamb is cooked perfectly. Um, I'm liking a little sauce. And you told me you made seven gallons, so we should definitely put a little bit more on there. Okay. And your, your farro needs a little, a little bit more um, something. It, has, it, has, it doesn't have enough depth seasoning. Absolutely. Carrots are cooked perfectly. Again, they need a little just a little something. I think we got to salt it and pepper it enough in preparation so we'll... Is that because you knew I was going to try it? Uh, What's your excuse now, Peter? There is no excuse. Oh, okay. I don't want to hear an excuse. Just make miserably. it... No, it's good. Okay. Look, the idea is good. Just make sure that you season it a little bit more. Dessert? That is me. Irina? In honor of upcoming Thanksgiving, we have a pumpkin cheesecake that's then finished with a maple curry whipped cream. It's just got a teeny little hint of the savory in there to kind of bring it to life, give it that little bit of the twist on the unexpected, and it's finished with a um, maple ginger ring. And I'm still tweaking the presentation a little bit. So in the cream is curry and? Curry, a little bit of powdered sugar, just a teeny touch of maple, and then heavy cream. And then the grated pot on top is what? Uh, a little fresh nutmeg. Not me. Yes. Okay, cool. I really love the texture of the two. I like the crunch on the bottom. I would put maybe a little bit more crunch. I'm curious about this part here. I always love when cooks start putting stuff around the edge of the I plate. Was told I always it was sort of a 70s technique, so <laughs> maybe going away. No, this is a technique that gets used more often than it should, I think. It's kind of like, kind of like you're, you're, you're saying to the customer, try some of it, but they can't really get to it because it's... Would you kill that? No. I would do, I would try to figure out a way to make the customer try it if you want them to try it. If you don't want them to try it, then I would definitely not put on the plate. Got it, okay. You guys did a fantastic job so far. Keep remembering the most important part. Try your food. Yes. Salt, pepper, you know, just last minute seasoning, a little touch of olive oil, butter, things like this are always very helpful. We need to make sure that this kitchen is spotless, well organized, each of your plate ready to go. Absolutely. In about 45 minutes, the guests are going to start coming and we got to start serving the uh, amuse bush, okay? Put your plate in the oven for you if you need to warm them up. Make sure you're all lined up, okay? It's very important that we do this correctly, otherwise we're going to be in the middle of sending 50 plates and have a complete chaos. And you don't want chaos. Neither do I, most importantly. <laughs> all right, have fun, you guys. Would you do anything else to this if you were um, doing it? I would give it some sort of candy or something, but we don't have time for that. Um, but then you're going to go back around. What if we sprinkle that on top? Yeah. A garnish. Yeah. The selections look fantastic. Obviously, I'm a big in the seafood kind of guy, and I'm a big in the food kind of guy, I suppose. But uh, you know, the use of lobster a couple times looks really great. Um, raw tuna and a scallop for the amusement—it sounds like a lot of fun. So I can't wait to see what we're doing with uh, curry down here at dessert.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kitchen Circus. We are so glad to have you dining with us tonight and judging the competition. This is how it works. Each one of you have a menu that describes the courses that you will be served tonight. We want you to vote on each of the courses on all three criteria, taste, creativity, and presentation. We will collect these ballots at the end of each of the course. At the end of tonight's dinner, we will announce who will move on to compete in the Kitchen Circus finale. For first course, the amuse-bouche. We have one of them that's a main lobster that's served in a catafi nest and a lemon beurre blanc. The, um, the other uh, amuse-bouche will be a grilled scallop in a coconut lime soup. And we also have a tuna tartare with pomelo and chili oil. Bon appétit. scallop was so rich and fatty that it just needed a little bit more lime to kind of finish it up. The lobster for me was the most complete. I agree with Steve. I, I like the lobster. I had it in one bite. It was really nice. I mean, all the, the, the one bite amusement aspect of it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. They're not popping out flavor-wise like the other ones did, especially last week. Those ones were extraordinary, I remember that. And these ones, like this last one, the tart de tuna, I wanted, I wanted more pomelo and I wanted less oil but more chili. I wanted more contrast, was, I had a little too much oil. So, yeah, I wasn't as amused with my bouche, was not as amused. <laughs> All right, I'm here to announce to you the first course of tonight's dinner at Kitchen Circus. We have a uh, lobster that was poached in a glazed and glazed into a chipotle beurre blanc. And it is served on a bed of mixed green with roasted mushrooms. Bon appétit. Boy, they do get wealthy on you, no thanks. Christina, five minutes. Five minutes, okay. I need eight plates to start. Eight. Christine, first table, eight, eight, eight plates. plates to start, yes. Next table, six plates. Okay. How are we doing on the stretch? All right, we got a stretch. All right, give me. Oh, these are, oh my gosh. We don't have any pieces over there. Three plates. Three more plates. Excellent, okay. Let's get one more look, guy right here. Tuck him on. Yep. Last table. Last plate. Seasoning wise, it's seasoned really well for me. So if I was to say subjectively, yeah, I kind of like it to be a little softer. I'd agree, it's a little chewier than I want it to be. There's definitely a level of creativity using chipotle with the, the butter and lobster. It's <clears throat> it's definitely not a traditional approach to, to throw in the heat with shellfish like this or something that's as delicate as lobster can be. I think it worked out really well. There was a nice acid balance and, and honestly because the time of year it really felt nice and warming to have that that nice spiciness in it. So I think the Pur Blanc and the Chipotle worked really well together. That was really nice. It was a very pretty place. Congratulations, Christine! Bravo, you guys. It's done. Bravo, good job, guys. <laughs> All right, for your entree tonight, we have a lamb loin that is uh, seared and sauteed and uh, served with farro, king oyster mushroom with ville de miglaise served on the side and a little tarragon at the end. And I can't tell you who made it, but it's delicious. <laughs> bon appétit. Okay, let's go on. Huh? Yes, okay. 
Okay. We don't have all night. Yes, sir. Those plates are getting harder, guys. Good job, Peter. Yeah, thank you. They let it rest. There wasn't a lot of juices leading out of the meat, so. I was expecting it to be tougher because maybe they didn't let it rest. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. It's not at all. It's very nice to see that it's not tough at all. Yeah. I remember the cream that worked so well with the farro and the mushrooms. I think the carrots could be cooked more. Yeah. Yeah. They're too crunchy. Yeah, yeah too crunchy. I, I loved it. I think it was really great. The color of the carrots, the color of the meat, the flesh. It was really, um, you could see the technique was done well, searing and roasting the, the loin because it had a really nice red center to it. And, and like Maria said, it rested as well, so it wasn't overly chewy for the, the eating. It was quite nice. Okay. Slam dunk. They nailed it. They totally nailed it. But out of all the dishes, like this is definitely the strongest dish. All right, for dessert, we have a wonderful pumpkin cheesecake. Thanksgiving is right around the corner and I thought that would be very appropriate, so pumpkin it is. And on top of it is served a, um, a curry whipped cream. And it's got a little grated nutmeg, a little uh, cookie that's crumbled around. I'm very excited. And then we'll tabulate the vote and decide on who will be our third winner and will go into the grand finale dinner of Kitchen Circus. Bon appétit and enjoy. than the other things that people have to prepare? I think it's Karina who's been helping them with the desserts. Is that right? <laughs> oh, no, I'm serious. I really oh, do. I mean, I they have been amazing. She was my own sous chef. So perhaps you have given me the common denominator. The sous chef is really... Could be it. I really think it's Karina. Because they've all been... I mean, they've been, you know, just sort of stand above the market. Like Oh wow. With that I think curry. It's doing it again. <laughs> the addition likely in this spice mixture is gonna be cumin and turmeric that would be different than say pumpkin cheesecake spices. Right, right. The earthenness of the curry works or the cumin works is fantastic though. When I read uh, you know the curry and then the, the pumpkin, I was a little skeptical thinking those are gonna clash, the curry is gonna overpower, but she did or he did just the right amount of curry, so it didn't actually overpower the, the pumpkin cheesecake, because that was what my concern was. So it was kind of nice to see them be bold and uh, really push themselves and push the diners to you know, ha have that combination of the curry and the pumpkin spices. And they pulled it off well, because it could have been completely disastrous, and they did a nice job with the balance. Yeah, three weeks ago, three great desserts. This this one is is a tough one to beat. Fina, good job. All right, congratulations, you guys. Job well done. Congratulations. You ought to be proud of yourself. You learned something today? Did you learn anything? Yeah, a lot. Yes. Oh yeah. What did you learn, Christine? The best thing to do with microgreens is plate them on top so they do not wilt with the heat of the lobster or anything else. That would be your vertical. That's what I'd change for sure. What about you, did you learn? Uh, don't turn your whipped cream into butter. That is bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do a second whipped cream. And uh, just to be more cognizant of picking recipes that are going to be well adapted for the time. I think we just snuck in under the wire with the cheesecake. Congratulations again, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming to Kitchen Circus. And uh, best of luck. The votes are going to be tabulated right now. And how about a toast to our sous chefs? Yes. Oh, so we nice. could not have done so without you. Nice. Thank you for putting up with civilians in your kitchen. Yeah. How was your dessert? Yeah.
Thank you everyone for being a judge at Kitchen Circus. Before we announce the winner, I also want to thank our sponsor, Charlie's Produce, who was kind enough to lend us a hand. Without him, we could have not filmed this. Thank you, Charlie. Also, I want to say thank you to Jean Juarez, who's providing my beautiful look tonight. <laughs> what are you guys laughing at? <laughs> and uh, Le Creuset for donating cookware and open table for online promotion. Your votes have been tabulated and we've come to a final decision. Third place tonight, the entree from Peter. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Adam, Adam, we won. We won. You guys, you guys, you guys yeah. won the third place. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for, Arena Malarkey! <laughs> Congratulations! Now you won! I She just realized she won! She did not! No winner all the night in case it wasn't clear! With this beautiful Le Creuset pan you can bake us another cheesecake. You better believe it! And uh, Corina, congratulations again. You guys did a fantastic job. So, not to forget, second place as well. That would be obviously for Christine. At the second place, you get the prize of getting the right first right to participate in our next kitchen series. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you again very, very much for coming. Truly appreciate it. I hope you had a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to look forward to the grand finale dinner. And keep in touch with us on Facebook Kitchen Circus. Thanks for watching. Anybody that thinks that what these professionals do day after day is easy, they're just crazy. And you just get such a tremendous respect for, for what they do. And I guess the other takeaway is that it reminds me just how much I, I love cooking and how much I love the, the, the reaction I get when people eat, eat my food and they're happy. I love the idea of coming back because uh, I've learned so much already and I can use those skills to go at it again. I learned so many valuable things from Chef Terry, from Chef Rob, from my sous chef Katie. I mean, I could sit there and talk to them more. I would love to pick their brain. I got some stiff competition, so it's dessert three times. So it's going to be an interesting game. And uh, Karina, I don't know, she's going to be getting some bragging between now and uh, next week. So she's definitely the, the one to have on your team. Coming up next on Kitchen Circus, the diners have chosen. Will it be Beth, Marissa, or Erina who wins the Kitchen Circus finale? This looks like the front cover of Bon Appetit magazine. Look at that. Yeah, this is beautiful. Unless you have a pan on the fire now, you're going to be in trouble. The oven is the oven is preheating as we speak. Make it a killer soup. I'm going to try. The grand champion of Kitchen Circus this season is...